Hey, what's up? Jordan here, and it is good to see you. Today we are talking about blogging, how we can get your images, your amazing images, from your computer to a blog post online that acts as a word of mouth marketing piece for you, or just like a marketing piece for you. Every time you blog, you think about it like bumping up the SEO of your overall site because that's telling Google, hey, this person updates their website. That is a relevant website. So that is good for you. If you can work it into your routine to blog each week, that's great. And then, you know, obviously if you could blog every session that you shoot, I mean, that's a game changer right there. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to easily create a blog post that keeps people on your page longer, that's creative, that includes these image sets that are extremely pinnable. You can do it all in Lightroom. Here are 10 things I like to add to my blog post if I have my wits about me and I'm thinking about it. Number one, power images. Now these don't even have to be your favorite shots. They are just the most powerful shots in your gallery. They are the shots that stop people when they're scrolling on Instagram. They are the shots that hook the people who are seeing your blog post and make them want to keep scrolling. These kinds of shots are great for kicking off your blog post, adding to Facebook as a sneak peek, or even throwing up on an Instagram story. And these shots most likely will always take the lead on Pinterest. Number two, story shots. These are those like in between moments, you know, it could be a landscape, a candid photo, something that would help to tell a story, a complete story for somebody who wasn't there. You can have the best photo shoot gallery anyone has ever seen. And if you don't have these storytelling pieces, then it's going to be a lot harder to get published or even create that kind of storytelling experience for people who might be wanting to book you. Number three, reveal shots. Now you've hooked people with your power shot and you've included some storytelling shots, but what's gonna keep people scrolling all the way to the very bottom of the post? So if you're blogging a wedding, maybe for the power image, you show a close up of the couple, something that doesn't totally reveal her dress. Then you include some detail shots, which are those storytelling shots, maybe a landscape of what it looks like or what the sky looks like that day. And then you go into your reveal shot, which is a vertical shot of her and her dress. That's a reveal shot. And when you do that on your blog, you're creating this anticipation. People want to keep scrolling after that. It's kind of like the scrolling paid off for them. So they want to keep going. I don't normally add a ton of these to my blog posts, but one or two tend to work really well. And reveal shots don't have to be used every time you blog. Like the shoot that we're blogging today, the one with the, the product photography, the jewelry, things like that, there's nothing to reveal. The jewelry is the reveal and it's in every shot. So there's nothing really to build up toward. Number four, contradictory shots. These are really one of my favorites because you just basically pair opposite things next to each other and it creates this really cool story in someone's mind. A detail paired with a landscape shot. Anything like that creates just a little bit more interest as people are scrolling. Number five, credit all your people. Whoever you worked with on the shoot, make sure they're included. Make sure they're given credit. You know, it could go to their website or their Instagram, whatever they want, whatever's gonna serve them best. Make sure you link that in the post. That's gonna go a long ways with vendors who are used to, you know, photographers kind of making it all about them and then not sharing the love and sharing the credit. It's really a great way for you to set yourself apart and honestly for them to start recommending you because you are including and crediting other people in your post. Six, add your keywords to your images. You can do this by changing the title before you upload them, but then also, you know, after you have uploaded them, you can change the title, just make it a little bit different from photo to photo, add captions if you want, and that's gonna look really SEO friendly to Google and any other search engine out there. Now, I actually have a video on this called SEO for photographers, but it's for any creative entrepreneur. So if you are a creative entrepreneur and you need to bump up your SEO game, I've got you covered with a video. I'll put it right up here at the top. Number seven, category. And while this is super simple, you just select the blog category, the blog category that you want to use for the shoot. It's going to make it so user friendly and it makes it easier for people to point your blog posts, to point your images to their friends so they can just say, Hey, go to so-and-so's blog, check out the engagement photos. The third one down is my favorite or something like that. You know, it just kind of helps keep your blog organized, keep people on your blog. Number eight, a catchy headline 
or a practical SEO driven headline. A basic approach would be to name it something like Isaac and Jordan wedding in Branson, Missouri, or you know, you could even name it garden wedding overlooking the Ozark mountains, or even would you ever do a balloon first look? Something like that's going to get someone to click. And that's what you want to do. You can split test this on your blog. If there's a way, if you have a way with your blog, but I suggest once you've named it, that you don't change it later on, unless you've got a strategy behind that. Number nine, excerpt. And I don't know that every blog has this option. I personally use Squarespace, love them. And this little box helps to boost my SEO and give me that little added bump on Google. I think the most important thing with this box is just to keep it conversational, fill it up, but don't make it too long. About two sentences is typically what works well for SEO. Also, Squarespace. This video isn't sponsored by Squarespace, although I I would love to be sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace, if you were listening, I'm out here. My designer actually switched me over a few years ago. I was using something else, something super trendy, switched me over and I have fallen in love. It's taken my SEO to the next level. I know a lot of people were nervous that you know switching to Squarespace would hurt their SEO. I did not see that. I saw a massive boost in my SEO. Basically, Squarespace is not like your grandma's mean cat that you're allergic to. You know what I'm talking about? Like where you show up and your eyes get red and all scratchy and it's like, oh, did an animal claw at your eyes? You're like, no, it's actually just my grandma's cat. Squarespace does not make you feel like that because they help you when you have a problem. They've got the customer support, all that jazz, drag and drop templates. I mean, the list is insane and mobile friendly, which again, super important for SEO. And last but not least, what might be the most important part of your blog post, except for actually doing it and getting it done, is the call to action at the end. I missed this thing for years can't believe it. Missed out on golden opportunities. You can add a call to action to send people to your Facebook page or to an Instagram live or to your Instagram page. Yes, you know, like that could help. You could send them to an online gallery where they could purchase prints for your couple. I mean, that would have been smart. Wish I would have done. Wish I would have thought of that while I was still shooting weddings. That's smart right there. Do that. I mean, we love talking about passive income, but that is passive income in the classic prints. Just offer prints to guests and be an awesome photographer at the reception that goes around, gets people with whoever they're with and they will wanna order those. So put a call to action to order prints at the end. And don't forget to add like a text call to action. So you can add the image call to action and then the text call to action can kind of point to that image call to action. The text could be something like, hey, leave a comment down below or leave a comment on my Instagram post. And then you can say, you know, have your images and say view more photos on Instagram. These 10 are not have to's. So you don't have to do this every time, take it, leave it, whatever, but these are things that I found that work for me. I don't use them. I don't use all of them every time. I use some of them every time. I use all of them some of the time. If you, if anyone can even understand what I mean, I'm not even sure I can. All I know is I am tired and I need some coffee. Now in the most creative, chill way possible, we're gonna blog these images and put all those things to use. So today we are working with images from the shoot that I did for a nonprofit here in the US. They work on pulling women out of trafficking and one of the ways, hold on. Okay, that looks better. One of the ways, oh my gosh. One of the ways that they do that is by selling jewelry and you'll see later, bracelets, necklaces, and they have some clothing too, like these kimonos. Okay, so we are not just resizing these images in Lightroom. We are gonna make them super fun to look at, easily. You're just gonna drag and drop, and I can customize it for my brand. Inside the print module, I'm gonna be working with my own Lightroom templates for today, but you can totally DIY this yourself, or if you want, if it's easier, I'll leave the link to this product of mine down in the description. If you enter YouTube50 at checkout, all caps, all one word, YouTube 50, you'll get 50% off these blog post templates inside Lightroom. Diving in to Lightroom, first things first, I'm going to scroll through my gallery and five star anything that could be a power image. Anything that's going to convert really well or be really engaging. It can be a creative shot, something that's pulled back or even something that's unexpected. On details, I'm gonna rate them at three and then um, the supporting images, I'm gonna rate at four. Go in and look for these colors and update them to your own brand color. And then you just right click and update with current settings. So I think 
to kick off the shoot, I'm actually going to use this one. So print to file, and then you just want to name it something that's SEO friendly. Product photography, Springfield, Missouri. Once I've used an image, I'm going to start it as zero. Everything that start as one is going to be exported for Facebook. Threes are my details, fours are my supporting images, and fives are my power images. So since I've used this, I'm going to start at zero. Once I get that vertical image, I'm going to jump straight into a break. Shop now, and you could even, you could change the color, you could override it here, you can make it blue or whatever. I mean, white looks good. Pop over here to get this color, like that. So it looked like this. We want two details and then a main shot. Let's use this image and this image and then let's pair it with. Good, we'll store those as zero. And then let's jump into a vertical split. Well, actually let's introduce that one other, this one other gal. Um, we'll go to a power image and pull this one in of her. Okay, now let's go into a vertical split and we will just blog right from the beginning. So I love this image. Um, let's do this. Let's pair it with another model. We'll see if this will work. Let's see, do we like that? I think this image would need to go on the right. So let's try this one and a more full frame image here. Maybe something like this. Looks good. Okay. Let's go into a vertical. I love this image, wanna make sure we use it. And then let's split it up again. Let's do another break. We'll ground the image set right here. Let's do a create full in this creative shot, a great hair shot, a detail shot here, something like this. And then we just need a shot for down here on the left. I've already got a hair shot, or this could be lovely. This also acts as a grounding shot, I really like that. But let's move it to this side and then do the hand shot on the left. You don't have to zero out the images, I just find it keeps people engaged on Facebook longer if they're not looking through images that they've already seen. So let's go back to our storytelling and we'll pull in this image. Switch to a vertical split. Ooh, let's go with that. I know that I'm not gonna use these now in the blog post, so I'm gonna store them at one, so I share them to Facebook. I have a lot of great shots of this model at the end, so we're gonna put that one to Facebook. Let's skip those and jump in here. Let's go to a vertical for this one, and a vertical split for this. We have four images here of her. These last two are the same, so let's look for a three image set. We haven't used this one. I'm gonna uncheck that. And let's drag these in just to see what it looks like. Zero those out. A simple vertical. We use this shot. Let's do this. One, two, three, four of these. So they are all different, so we can definitely do a four image set here. But I want, you know what, I want this image, this one right here all by its own. So let's do a three image set. We haven't used this one in a while. Let's uncheck that identity plate. And we'll put her in the center with the details on the sides. Switch back to a vertical. Let's do this one here and this one here. Let's see, so we'll drag the bracelet shot up into the top, mix it up here. Let's switch back to a vertical. This is a really strong image of her. Like this, you can always put your logo in here. I'll probably add some text later on. On the left somewhere. This needs to be on the left somewhere. We can do all three of one gal here. Let's send all these to Facebook and go with a, an editorial here and a fun one to end. People are most likely to remember the first and the last 
And something we've done with the image sets is just trying to keep them creative so that people also remember them. We can drag any of these images and we can do a call to action to view more on Facebook or we can do a call to action to buy prints, whatever we, whatever you want to do. And you know you haven't used any, any of these images. I always suggest breaking up the images with text to keep people engaged. Keeps people on your page longer. So just a quick review, you can use power shots, story shots, reveal shots, contradictory shots. You can credit anyone who worked with you in the shoot. You can use keywords. You can create catchy headlines, add a category, an excerpt, and of course, a call to action at the end. So that's my process. This is how I'm blogging these days. Again, if you want those print templates, you can get 50% off today using the code YouTube50. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, dislike it if that's your favorite thing to do, subscribe for awful videos, and comment down below. I'd love to hear from you what you think of using Lightroom's print templates for your blogging. What do you think? I kind of love it. I'm obsessed actually, and I think I'll be using it for ever. Goodbye, blog stomp. Goodbye, blog stomp. Whatever you do, share your work because only you can see the world the way that you do, and we need your creative voice in this world. I am cheering you on. Until next time.